Uh, hello? Marty! You're awake! Good! Ack! Uh, Emmett, uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. If he knew I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the roof. Well, stay put. I'm on my way. Great! But first, I need you to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah. Is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Jeez, Doc. Watch out. You almost ran me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. So, how are the time circuits? Still broken. I've got a few ideas, but I'm occupied with other problems today. So, is that what I'm destined to build for the Expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! Even if you screw up Emmett's chances at the expo, there's no way he'll give up science now. He's too committed. You don't know me like I do. After he fails at the expo, he'll be in need of comfort. And Edna's already arranged a romantic little trip up to the lake. You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science. But if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father always wanted. As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be happy together. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure. Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? Where'd it go? Oh, come on. Here, little static thingy. Gotcha! There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. There's a world of wondrous wonder on display. Because the future is coming today. Not bad, eh? bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now. Here he comes, right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Callahan. Where's Emmett? What? 
Is he missing? Don't you recognize a ploy when you see one? Now, do your duty. Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. The electrokinetic levitator was Emmett's idea. I just helped. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Harry Callahan really is. And where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Harry? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh, Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. But she's been getting some clout in town ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. And, well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better, uh, Where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Hi, Trixie. That's techni to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now what can I do you for? So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the glass house, the future furnishings, and of course, enlightenment under the sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. How much are tickets? Aw, oh, put your money away. Here, you're kind of like family now, you know? Thanks. Happy to help. A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tannen's speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Welcome to the world of tomorrow, where a man's home is truly his castle. Here, gratification is just always a push of a button away. This plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. Hoping you're all having a swell time taking in all the exhibits. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attractions right here at the information booth. Okay, call me a snoop. Here, gratification is just always a 
push of a button away. In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Hey! Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Checkney News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan, I didn't expect to hear from you again till after the Expo. You didn't? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. Uh, about that plan. Regarding, uh, you know what. You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking, wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh, that was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away, and I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No, it's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Oh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Conversation terminated. Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in pond scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot! I labor in the field of porn scum. Algae, ladies and gentlemen. You no, know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. I believe I have unlocked the secrets of this noble living world. Shh, he's approaching. Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the expo from the likes of you. This will only take a minute. Our plant recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Listen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Let's take that as a yes. Emmett's got to be around here somewhere. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very... interesting. Huh. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon! Excuse me, Mr... Dudo, Jacques Dudo, at your service. I'm looking for a friend of mine, Emmett Brown. Tall young guy, reddish brown hair. A uh, distracted look? That's him. Any idea where he went? He just passed by here with an older gentleman. I think they were headed into the house of glass. Great, thanks. Hey, Emmett, come out of there. Don't listen to him.
Perfect. Welcome to the Atlas House of Glass, the future of domestic life. Okay, Emmett, let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett, don't listen to him. He he's crazy. I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas Glass. Unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass. Great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in, or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall. Emmett? Where'd you take him now, Doc? The next exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that our boys in blue will soon have at their disposal. The criminal element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for a tall, thin, older gentleman. He might have been with a tall, thin, younger gentleman. I know just who you're talking about. Hey, just left about a minute ago. If you hurry, you might catch them. I know you're in there, Doc. Doc? Yes, I am a doctor of marine biology, but I fail to understand what you're... Quit fooling around, Doc. What have you done with them? Stop! Emma? Help! I'm being attacked! Harry! What are you doing? You can't assault the exhibitors. You don't understand. He's kidnapped Emmett. The boy's obviously, uh, confusing. I'll say he is. You want I should toss him out on his ear? That won't be necessary. Do you know who that is? That's Jock Duteau of the Oceanic Institute. No, it's not. It's... Please keep it down. The Expo went through a lot of trouble and expense to secure Professor Duteau. We can't afford to antagonize him. But... If you've got a complaint against him, we can straighten it out after the show. But if you make another scene like that, I'm afraid I'm going to have you expelled from the hall. Where'd you stash Emmett? In the diving bell? It's called a bathosphere. Aha! So Emmett is in the bathosphere. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not going to get away with this, you know. As they say in my country, que sera, sera. Here's my ticket. I want to see inside that bathosphere. I don't think so. What do you mean? I've got a ticket. You have to honor my ticket. It's uh, uh, the, the, the wrong kind of ticket. Sorry. Oh, give me a break. Hey, Artie. What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure. But I was wondering. This ticket should get me into any exhibit on the floor, right? Sure. That's a P ticket. Well, the guy at the aquarium is refusing to honor it. Hmm. There must be some mistake. Come on, let's straighten this out. Professor Duteau, this young man claims you refuse to take his ticket. Not at all. I'm only too happy to take his ticket. Please, climb the ladder, and I will raise the path of sphere. Mon dieu, what is the matter? 
The gears, uh, they must have become stuck. I am afraid I cannot raise the bathosphere at this moment. What a shame. Yes, it is, it is, it is. Well, I will work on the problem. Perhaps if you come back later. Hiya, folks. It's me, Techni, Muse of Progress, gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit? Hey, folks? If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future. Right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. Step back! You're crimping the hose! What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? It's very bad form. Oh, sorry. So the lords, the gears, they have become unstuck. There, see? It was just a malfunction after all. Let's get you out of there. Huh? Emmett Brown? Then it was true. Hey, you. Hey, he just took that guy's wallet. I think he took his wallet. Oh. Remind me not to become an oceanographer. I guess I must have a touch of claustrophobia. Never should have gone in there. Well, we've all got problems. Now, you'd better get back to your booth Funny before... Funny thing is, I don't even remember going in there. Last thing I recall, I was in the glass house talking to Carl Sagan. Did you know he's really a scientist? I'd heard. What did he say to you? Oh, he had some sort of spur-of-the-moment business proposition. It was all very rush-rush, I never got the details. It would have meant leaving before the expo was over, so I told him that... Say, where'd he go? Do you know? Carl Sagan? He had to leave. One of his experiments blew up on him. Oh, I know how that is. Greetings and salutations to all our honored guests. I am Techni, Muse of Progress. And it is my pleasant task once again to highlight one of the great minds who was hard at work building a better tomorrow. I think that's me. I'm next on the roster. But are you ready? No, I don't have a choice. Did you bring the static accumulator? Oh, right. Here you go. Great. Come on, let's get up there. And who knows? One of this kid's gizmos just might take off and change the life of everybody in town. Could it be the very thing he's brought to share with us today? That ought to do it. Are the block bearings all in the raised position? Block bearings, block bearings. Raised position, check. Then it looks like all systems are gold. Wish me luck. I don't have to. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emmett Brown. Objection! Objection, Your Honor! I hereby demand that the scientific demonstration of Von Ebert Lettra Brown be terminated and forfeit by reason of insanity. I declare him to be in contempt of me, his father. Where is he? Hand him over this instant! Emmett, shh! Don't give me away! I thought you weren't scared of your father anymore. When he's in a mood like this, I'd have to be suicidal not to be scared. Just jump in the levitator and go. What's he gonna do? Shoot me down with an anti-aircraft gun? Come on, Emmett, you can't miss your big moment. You don't look very dignified crouching down there, you know. Better undignified than dead. Let me talk to him. <clears throat> you don't think you can shelter him? Emmett's gone. You just missed him. Young man, I've been sitting on the bench of Hill Valley Criminal Court for 15 years. I can smell a dissembler a mile away. Now, are you going to turn him over, or will I have to use force? 
Don't antagonize him. Well, if you're not gonna say anything... So he is up there with you! Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second! Emmett, I'm not talking to him. There's no point. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. He won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. I want to speak to my son! Emmett's not ready to talk to you. Uh, directly. Oh, God. I suppose you're his mouthpiece? I guess so. Yeah, he says it's no use talking to you. You never listen? That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen. If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. Emmett, I'm not talking to him. There's no point. You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well... At least give it a shot. Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. Understand. You don't know what it's like what to be young. You, you don't know what it's You're like to have dreams, to have ambitions so great and so way. powerful that they've got a life of their own. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they gallop on where they must. Don't this is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Well, we talked. Are you happy? Please, you gotta get out of Emmett's way. I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. See, Your Honor, it's just that this demo is so important to Emmett. <laughs> a childish kerfuffle. He'll forget all about it in two weeks' time. That's what I'm afraid of. Emmett's just... Stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, and obsessed. Okay. But if you look at it from the right angle, those traits are kind of... good. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake, those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? Sure. Uh, sure it will. Ha! You know as well as I how it'll end. Disaster! Maybe, maybe not, but even if it does, I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it there are no more mistakes. Emmett's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language with only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, me! And I made out all right, too. How'd your dad feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a disobedient little... So your father didn't approve of you coming to America? Well... Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but by then it was too late to. Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him. If he wants to talk. Emmett, care to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna? He says you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. He's not satisfied with insulting me. He's got to drag my mother through the dirt, too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like... Oh, skip it. You were starting to say that you're like... Skip it. Can it be that you and your dad? No. Next subject. Emmett, stop being a dope. You've got your pride. Okay, I, I get it. And so does he. But what's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. Sometimes it's, well, even more important than we realize. May I come up? So, you think my new invention is a disaster waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. 
and I'm here to say, if any son of mine is going to make of himself a public disaster, I insist on being there to support him. Pop! You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. You see, the force field generated by the static accumulator... Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Remit Brown and his electrokinetic levitator. could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before... No, don't come any closer. Doc! Go away! What? Move! Move! Marty! Oh my god! Doc! Say something. Chromium, lithium, potassium, iridium, titanium, ruthenium. I'll get, I'll get help. Newspaper. What? You mean... I'm gonna get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Oh, I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. Doc, come back. Marty, have you been out here the whole time? Damn it. Um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is going to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force, one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight. Oh, great Scott, that's it! So, what comes next? Work, work, and more work. A few more stumbles, followed by a breakthrough or two. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. 
Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? It's a long story. Let's just say I, uh, I lost somebody. Oh, how sad. Anyone I know? It was, uh, Carl Sagan. What? The guy who tried to hire me in there? You were friends with him? Strange. But how? Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here... But there's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask What's any... What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. Okay, here goes. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to something. Just, just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Wait, I will see you again, right? I guarantee it. So, you were the same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever, but what are you doing in 1931? I came to stop you from marrying Edna. Edna Strickland? I could never marry her. I mean, she was my first love, but after she broke my heart and tried to sabotage my career, I never saw her again. Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. You see my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his pop on an early grave. So that's how she got her job back. Ah, he, he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was Great Grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of... That car! Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Uh, 
Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait, and a Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it. It made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys, you mind telling me what the hell you're... Uh-oh. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. H how? Something must have happened to it, a long time ago. Well, now you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it, a hill or a valley? No, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I, I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. Just as I suspected. When did Hill Valley go away? Oh, heck, I don't know. That was all before I was born. Then whatever it was must have happened at least 45 years ago. Nobody much cares to settle around here nowadays. My dad tried to buy a farm in this area years ago, but... He got run off by Scary Mary. Scary Mary? Well, that's what we all call her. Lives a couple miles from here. I make a monthly drop at her place. She's a fiend for news. Takes all the papers in the county, never throws one away. Say, if there's anybody who could tell you what happened to Hill Valley, it's her. Can you direct us to her? It's imperative that we talk to her. Sorry, fellas, but I'm pretty sure she won't talk to you. I think she'll talk to me. I'm, I'm pretty good with women. The thing of it is, guys... Mary's older than dirt, but she's also a little touched, if you catch my drift. She doesn't like strangers. I'm sure we can handle her. We'll be very polite. Please, we gotta see her. Well, okay, if you insist. Take a right turn just after the bridge, then follow the wheel ruts till they come to an end. You'll have to go the last quarter mile on foot. Good luck, and don't say I didn't warn you. I got a notion I'll be kicking myself for sending you up there. Can I drive? Mary Pickford. for intruding, madam. We were wondering if you could tell us... I don't talk to hooligans! Not a very friendly sort. Doc, that was Edna. Edna Strickland? Impossible. This is how she was when I first met her. I had to... Listen, just leave it to me. Okay, you think you know how to handle her. Just remember, we need to know what happened to Hill Valley and just as importantly, the precise time when it happened. <laughs> Hey, Miss Strick. Who are you? Harry Callahan. That's a foolish name. 
And I make it a rule not to talk to strangers with foolish names. But we're not strangers. How do I know you? You interviewed me once, back when you were young. Listen, Sonny, I'm an easygoing woman, but I got a few rules I live by. And rule number one is, I never, ever talk about the past! Or the future, neither. I don't talk about any day but today. I guess that didn't go so well. Of course she doesn't talk about the past, because there's something in her past she's trying to forget. But we're gonna pry it out of her. Go ahead, knock on the door again. What? It's me again, your old friend. How do I know you? We spent the day together. We did? Where? At the expo. That's crazy. I've been here all... What day is it? Tuesday, October 13th, 1931. October 13th, 1931. October 13th. Something funny about that date. Well, what are you here for? I brought something for you. What is it? Let me see. I brought you... him. Him? Who oh, him? Him who? Sure, you remember him. Carl Sagan. Uh, the guy you framed as a speakeasy arsonist. Speakeasy? A arson? That's complete gibberish, Sonny. Whatever you're talking about's got nothing to do with me. I never involve myself in such criminal shenanigans. Still, his features remind me of someone. Look hard. Don't tell me you don't recognize your own boyfriend. My boyfriend? Yeah, he's, um, he's all grown up. Come closer, fella. Marty, what am I supposed to do? Trust me, Doc. Just go with it. It can't be! Emmett! Yes, Edna. It's me. It is! It's October 13th, 1931! Oh, and you are Emmett! Emmett! Oh. How did I get so turned around? H have I been dreaming? Or well, stay there! It's a classic case of repressed memory syndrome. Once the mental dam is broken, the subject is immediately plunged into the midst of the very scenes she's trying to forget. You've come back! Of course I knew you would. An intelligent boy like you wouldn't be one to throw away true love all because of a silly quarrel. I've already forgotten about last night's little tiff. I trust you've done the same? Of course I have. Of course I have. What? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, oh, you're sweet. But you're still keeping company with this Smirnoff character. I insist you drop him. He's a bad influence. And you've got to stop working on that dangerous electrokinetic... What's Um, okay. I suppose now you're miffed with me for forcing Detective Parker to close your booth down. Bitter medicine for you, I know, but I had to do it. And Parker had no choice but to obey my orders. He knows that my opinion carries a lot of weight in Hill Valley, and he'd never... Parker would never... Oh! What is it? I don't know. Something about Detective Parker. Something that happened to me on October 13th. What could it be? Can you jog her memory? If we can keep her mind in the past, we may get the full story of Hill Valley's premature destruction. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? 
Because no one else was doing anything about them. No! Turn it off, you imbecile! If Parker hears that, he'll... Officer, I can explain. It was a trick. I was framed. Oh, he's after me! Ha! He'll never catch me in this souped-up car of the future. Curses! I can't shake him. Well, no use in holding back now. Let's see what this baby can do. And here it comes! Yes? Here what comes? I, uh, I, I don't know. Something really unexpected is supposed to happen right about now, but I'm not sure what. Oh, come to think of it, how can I be expecting something unexpected? Uh, oh, what's going on? Quick, Marty. We've got to find a way to push the story along before she snaps out of her reverie. Here they come! The lights! I'm being transported! Where? Back! Back! To the past! What do you see? Hill Valley! But it's all different. It's so small and primitive. Heavens! Can it be? It is! Is what? Grandfather! Big as life! Marshal James Strickland came to Hill Valley in 1869, shot by... Ma I know, Doc. We met him in 1885. Remember? No! I must be mistaken. Grandfather didn't look like that. That man is an imposter! I'm not even sure it is a man! This is all very confusing. Where am I? Why am I thinking about the past? Get off my lawn, you kids! Better find a way to bring back Marshal Strickland quick. We've got to bring this story to a climax. I'm guessing this mop doesn't get much use. This hat doesn't frame her face very well. It looks a bit like Grandfather now, but he would never have walked around bareheaded. Not bad. Oh, Grandfather, how well you look. How well everything looks. How does everything look? Tell me. It's a bit rustic, to be sure, but all the buildings are so sturdy and well-kept, and the young people of Hill Valley, they're so virtuous and upright. So unlike the degenerate specimens from the 20th century, and I know the reason why. Why? why? They haven't yet fallen prey to the vices of booze and debauchery. They are still in a state of innocence. I think I could learn to like living here. <gasps> but who's this? Who? This big lout swaggering up the street. Lips curled in an insolent sneer. He's a newcomer to Hill Valley. Uh, Beauregard. Beauregard... Tannen. Yes. Good guess. Look at him. Acting like a big shot. Throwing his money around. Stolen money, no doubt. Why can't they see through him? The two-bit phony. And now his plan becomes clear. He's bought a plot of land in town. He's going to put up a... Uh, uh, a what? I don't know. It's something I don't like. Something evil. This is the key to our mystery. We've got to get her memory back in the groove. An old saloon sign. Cool. Too bad it's all burnt. Talk about a watering hole. A saloon? In Hill Valley? Oh, he can't do that! Grandpa, you can't let him do it! You can't let that snake ruin paradise! If they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. Something very... conclusive. No, you're doing it all wrong. It'll never burn like that. 
first we'll need some kerosene. Apply it liberally to the building site. No sense in being parsimonious. And now, watch. Isn't it beautiful? The devil's handiwork consumed by the fires of righteousness! <laughs> burn, you sucker! Burn! She was never this passionate when we were dating. Uh oh. What is it, Edna? Is it the fire? Turn away! Don't look! It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading to the other buildings in Hill Valley. My intentions were pure. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. But it did happen like this. And you've been repressing it all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're... A hooligan. I'm a hooligan. <laughs> did I lay it all too thick? Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed by fire started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this story, am I, Mr. Sagan? You set me up for a fall, you and Shmanoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, I hereby sentence you two criminals to... Hey. You! How much have you heard? Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. Two months worth if you shoot those fellas. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, right? This is your cue to skedaddle. Right. Much obliged. There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. I wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. Who's there? Edna, stop. It, it's just me. Mr. Sagan, what are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same question, Miss Pickford. Isn't it obvious? I'm putting an end to your den of iniquity before it starts. I don't think so, Mary. I don't like shooting women, but no one comes between Beauregard B. Tannen and his livelihood. Tannen, stop! If you shoot her, she'll drop the torch, and this whole place will burn up. Edna, stop! If you drop that torch, he'll shoot us! Looks like we're at something of a standoff here, Mr. Tannen. I don't see a way out, unless somebody manages to disarm both of you at the same time. How the hell am I supposed to do that? Pickle juice. That ought to be handy for putting out torches. It's too heavy to lift. I wonder what's in these. Oh, stop! Quiet! Gah. What the hell? Oh, cow crap! There goes all my pickled pig's feet! Crap! It's right over his head, but I can't knock him out while Edna's still holding that torch. Going down. Looks like your torch is getting a little dim there, Miss Pickford. It's still hot enough to bring down this little bit of Gamora, Tannen. Ugh. All right, physics. <clears throat> What was that noise? What noise? I didn't hear a noise. Oh, 
Okay, that was lucky. Won't be long now. We'll just see. Come on. Got any last words? I'll see you in hell, Tannen. You first, lady. Come on, you son of a... the hell are you? I'm the diversion, butthead. Nice one, Doc. Don't tell Clara. She thinks Fistikov set a bad example for the boys. Now, where's Edna? Doc, she's gone. Edna's DeLorean. We gotta stop her before she hits 88 miles per hour. Come on! Nothing to be worried about. You're a smart woman with a strong moral compass. You just need to think your way out of it. Oh, fudge! What's she doing? I think she's spouting euphemisms at us. Luckily, the road out of Hill Valley is still pretty rough in 1875. It's unlikely she managed to accelerate 88 miles an hour anytime soon. How are we gonna stop her? Good question. We can't risk injuring her or damaging the vehicle for fear of altering the timeline even further. Luckily, those diagnostic lights my alternate self put all over her and Gloria have given me an idea. Here, take these. What are these? Flux synchronization modules. How do they work? I generally use them for maintenance purposes, but we might be able to use them to sync up with the alternate Gloria's diagnostic modules, thus making it possible to link both sets of time circuits and override the time destination of the alternate DeLorean. At least that's the theory, anyway. That's a great plan, I think. Best of all, we won't need to weld the modules to the frame. We just snap them over the diagnostic lights. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to go out there? How the heck am I supposed to do that? Good question. Let me think. Aha! A hoverboard! It saved our hides a few times before, so it seemed like the appropriate tool to bring along for the job. Sweet! You okay? It's just like riding a bike. You ready to make the jump? Ready, Doc. Where'd you get these? From Burns Cash on 21st century video game consoles. Now remember, all you've got to do is attach the flux sync modules to those diagnostic lights. Will do, Doc. Is this the starboard flux emitter? Yes. Now plug in the flux sync. <laughs> all right. Nicely done. Now, aim the sink toward the receiving dish. I'll try, but it's getting a little bumpy out here. Great, that's one flux sink down. Flux emitter? Yes. Now plug in the flux sink. Here goes nothing, Doc. Whoa. Perfect. Now, aim the flux sink towards the receiving dish on my DeLorean. The receiving dish. Receiving dish. Uh, check. Get off my car, 
Are you hooligan? Edna! What? Let me in! You want in? Fine! Ah! Marty, are you all right? Um, not really. What? Pull over! No! Oh! Uh. Excellent, Marty. Now that you're on top of the board and you can attach the flux sink to the overhead flux emitter. That's great, Doc. Ha! Nicely done. Now, aim the sink toward the receiving dish. That's it. Get out of there, Marty. Phew. with the flux synchronizers and that's strange. What? According to these readings, the temporal cohesion of Edna's DeLorean is decaying at an alarming rate. English, Doc. We've got to get Edna home. Now! Parker, then I must be back in... Would you be kind enough to tell me what day it is? It's the day I place you under arrest for arson, resisting arrest, and being a general all-round pain in the what? ass. What? No! You can't arrest me! Not now, I just got back from the last century. Would you look at that! Edna Strickland, drunk as a skunk. I'm not drunk, you reprobate! I'm a time traveler! Sure you are. <laughs> I'm loving this. I'll prove it to you. Come with me. We can do the whole day over if you want. We can fix everything. We can start by drying you out. Come on, into the station with you. You can bunk with me, doll. I'd rather die. Stop it! Unhand me, you dolt! Well, I guess that's it for Edna. Yes, I suppose it is. You know, whoever said time heals all wounds didn't know squat about time travel. What do we do about that, DeLorean? No need to do a thing. Ever since we synced up the time circuits, the temporal breakdown in Edna's DeLorean has accelerated at an exponential rate. By my calculations, the timeline should catch up with it in five, four, three, two, one, now! What the hell? Hey, Parker, you're not gonna believe this! See? what I say? Ready to go home? Wait, Doc, the timeline's not fixed yet. Look! Harry, you missed all the fireworks at the expo. Yeah, so I heard. Listen, I heard a rumor about you two. I guess we gotta come clean. Ta-da! Hottie took me to Reno last night. Try to keep a secret in Hill Valley. <laughs> well, you're gonna congratulate us or what? Then it's true. My grandpa's married the wrong grandma. I'm done for. Hey, are you feeling all right, kid? You don't look so hot. Marty, you can't do this. You're not supposed to get married for another five years. Well, I know Trixie and I were taking things slow. But after that witch Edna got me fired with that postcard, we kind of accelerated things a little. The postcard? Oh, man. Trixie, you can't marry Artie. Is this about my past with Kid? Because Artie ain't holding that against me. That's right, darling. The past is the past. Yeah, but... Can you see through me? Nope. Never could figure you out. I thought you'd be thrilled for us. You don't understand. You're supposed to marry Sylvia Miskin. But I did marry Sylvia Miskin. What? You didn't think my real name was Trixie Trotter, did ya? 
don't feel too bad. It was kind of a surprise to me, too. Wait a minute. You're Grandma Sylvie? Grandma? Hey, how old do you think I am, kiddo? Uh, but you're so... so skinny and blonde and... Huh. Yeah, you know, I, oh, my God. I've seen you naked. You're Sylvia? Are you okay, pal? Yeah, I'm fine. Great. You kids go off and have yourself a wonderful honeymoon. And don't worry about your dad, Artie. I'm sure he'll come around. Come around to what? Um, to approving your marriage. You seem kind of mad about it back at the high school. Well, that was before I got a look at her. Besides, as my dear old father Seamus used to say, no sense in getting riled up over something I can't do nothing about. And honestly, now that I met her, I can't imagine a better daughter-in-law than the charming Miss Sylvie here. Aww. Thank you, Dad. As for you, stranger, I'll thank you to not go poking your nose in McFly family business. It's been a pleasure, Agent Callahan. See you in the funny papers, Harry. Goodbye, Grandma. You know, I took some pictures of Trixie in 1931. Hey, that's my grandma you're talking about. Here we are, back in good old 1986. May 14th? 15th. Best to build in a little lag time. Gives you a chance to catch up. Looks like the estate sale is still going on. Hey, don't you want to stay, Doc? You gotta stop the bank from selling off all your old stuff. What are you talking about? Estate sale? Bank? I'm not dead, Marty. Clara and I are having a little garage sale, that's all. Garage sale? You mean... Marty, you're back from your trip. Hello, Doc. Selling off the family treasures, eh? <laughs> not quite. But I hope you find something you like. Speaking of which, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I sure did. Great! Hey, is that a box of Asimov? Let me get this straight. Are you telling me you live here now? In 1986? Well, naturally. Claire and I maintain a part-time residence here. Wasn't that the case when you left? No. Strange. I can't imagine not sticking around. After all, I've got my late father's foundation to supervise. If I wasn't here, who'd present the annual Earhart Brown Scholarship for Young Scientists? <laughs> Something funny? I'll explain it to you later. I don't see what's so funny about looking after a family legacy. Oh, almost forgot. I've got something for you. Happy graduation. Graduation? But that's not for another... The McFlies of Hill Valley. An exhaustively detailed history of your family. From your great-great-grandfather Seamus to the present. You traveled through time to write this? Well, most of the research was done traditionally. But your grandma Sylvia proved to be something of a mystery. Which is why you traveled back to 1931 to look for her. Exactly. Who knew she was singing in a speakeasy on her stage name? This is great, Doc. Thanks. Ah, uh, it's the least I can do for the man who saved me from making the worst mistake of my life. Yoo-hoo! Dr. Brown! Edna? Heine! What's going on? What are you doing with my dog? The same thing I do every afternoon, silly man. Giving him such much-needed exercise? Isn't that right, Einstein? Hey, Dollface, it's past time for our 3.30. Coming, sweetie! Oh, Mr. McFly, have you seen my stepson anywhere? Oh, Biff, I think you're late for an appointment. Oh, uh, well, gosh, uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, uh, hi, Marty. Don't they make a great little family? You'd never know they met in prison. Don't say anything. 
Let's just walk quietly into the lab and hope there are no more surprises. Marty, you can't be here. If your younger self sees you, the consequences could be catastrophic. My younger self? Oh, right. Bring him along, too. This concerns all of us. What do you mean? Does something happen to us? Do we turn into assholes or something? Nah, we're fine. But our great-great-grandkids? They're... What the hell? Great Scott! Doc, you gotta come back with me. Back Don't to listen to him, Doc. It's me you gotta help. If you want to save Jennifer and our 12 kids. What? That timeline was overwritten five jumps back. Doc, Jennifer's how can there be two more of me here? I have no idea. My all rights of space-time continuum should be tearing apart like a cheap dish rag right now. It already is. What my evil twin and I are trying to say is the future is totally jacked up. And you gotta come with me to save it. No, me! So... We meet at last. You've altered my timeline once too often. What's going on, Doc? Well, we do seem to have a conundrum on our hands. Or three. Yeah, Doc, but which one is the real me? Isn't it obvious, Marty? Come on! Prepare to be erased. Doc, wait! What about the space-time continuum? Yeah, what about my future? And mine? The future can wait. We've got a present to catch up with. Where to, Doc? Mr. McFly, thrill me.